Hey everybody, this is Kenya Masala for X8 Drums and today we're going to work on how to tune your djembe. This is the Jammer series from X8 Drums and you can see that when you pull it out of the box it already has some of the tuning mechanism built right in, but we're gonna talk about the full details on that. So what does it mean to tune your djembe? Well, your djembe can really sound any way you want it. There's no exact perfect way. Some folks like to have their drums really tuned up high, get those high notes, very high pitch. Some folks prefer a lower, mellower sound. Right now, I would say that this drum is more on the low sound. In order to really get the differentiation of the notes on the djembe, it's sometimes nice to have a little bit more tension on this head. What do I mean by tension? If I apply right to the middle of the drum there with my thumb, you can see I can push this down oh, probably about a quarter inch or so. You can pull that up so that you can't quite push down as much on it. And how much tension is the right tension? Again, it really depends on the sound that you're after. You'll see that as we tune this drum up, it's going to actually come up in pitch. And we're not looking for a specific note, it's really a matter again of that sound. It's nice to have a full spectrum of sounds with the djembe when you're playing with other folks. So they really kind of fill in the melody with the rhythm. So when you pull your drum out, you'll see that it has these vertical lines and these are literally called the verticals. Now these are tuned and pulled pretty tight when they leave the X8 drum factory. And we also add three what are called diamonds into it already so you get a sense of how to start the tuning process. So you will undo what you see here as all this extra rope. As you undo that, it's totally fine. Nothing's gonna happen to your drum. It's not gonna fall apart. This is just the extra rope that's specifically there for you to tune up your drum. So you go ahead and undo that knot, pull that out, and simply allow all of this extra loop to come loose off of the drum here. Beautiful. Now with this extra rope, we're going to start adding tension, literally adding tension to the head of the drum. Every time we put the right knot and twist into these verticals, it pulls down on the head of the drum and that's how we tune it up. So what we're looking for is a particular pattern. Again, it's been started here for us. So as you can see what I'm doing here. I'm literally taking the extra rope and laying it across the next pair of verticals, right? This one's already used, so I'm not gonna actually get that one. I'm getting the next two that have not been used yet. So I'm going over two. That's what I mean by over two. Literally taking the rope and going over those two. Find the end of my rope here. I'm going under that second one and then over and then back under both. Let me explain that again. What we're after is this Z, if you will, right here. Okay, start it again from the beginning. Take the end of my rope. I'm literally selecting these two, going over, over two, under one, over one, and under two to create that particular pattern. What's going to happen with this pattern is when I pull this and apply tension, it's going to take this rope and twist it over this one and lock it into place. Now, as you start pulling all the extra rope, you wanna do that up high on the djembe, but as you start to get that tension, you wanna make sure that you're pulling that diamond all the way down here. The reason you're pulling here is because if you take this nice long bit of rope and you kinda of start pulling it down here and yanking on it, you're gonna actually put a rope burn on the wood of your drum and you wanna avoid doing that. So I'm gonna get most, most of my slack out of the rope here. And you notice I kind of ran my fingers along the rope as I was doing that to help get some of the twists out of it. Just makes it a little bit easier. All right, so now I'm almost 
to the end of that extra slack that I had, this is where I can now start to snug it down. Bring it down as far as I can. And now I will pull all of that extra out. I keep it facing the camera here so you can see what happens. As I pull and I bring my trusty pulling tool, this just makes it a little bit easier on the hands. Just wrap it around that stick so you can actually use the stick to offer that extra little bit of force. You see what happened there is the ropes literally twisted over each other. Snug it down a little bit more and we'll go into another one. Straighten out my rope. Again, which two am I going for? Aha, the two that have not been used. This one's already being used, as you can see there. So the two that haven't been used, those are the ones I'm going to work with. Over two. Under one. I'm under this one. Over one. And under two. There's my Z. Pulling all of that loose rope. Again, I'm doing that up high so that as the rope moves, it's got room and it's not actually rubbing against the wood of the drum. Almost out of my slack, so now I can start pulling it down. Again, as I apply this pressure, it's going to twist this rope over that, just like that. In this way that I'm doing it, what's happening is literally the twist in the rope is locking that extra rope right onto the, butt, uh, to the bell of the drum. So you don't have to worry about holding it and keeping tension on it. It's actually going to just stay there and maintain itself as I ready myself to put in the next diamond. Here's my Z. I'll slow down on the next one. There we go. So now we've added three diamonds here into the edge of the drum and can literally hear that there's tension on the head and the pitch of the head is already starting to come up. So first I have to select the pair that I'm going to pull. How do I do that? Well, this one's already been used right here. So I know I'll have to take this one next to it and the adjacent one as well. Get the end of my rope. So I'm first going over two. So these are the two that I'm going to pull, going over those two, under one, got under that one, over one, and under two. That's what you want your pattern to look like. See, I've gone over two, under one, over one, under two. From there, I pull all the extra rope out. And as it starts to tension up, I begin to pull that down. Close down to the bottom as I can. Pull it through and I get my twist. So, we have pulled diamonds all the way around the bowl of the drum. We started with three, we've made it all the way around here. So what happens when you get all the way to the end? Well, the first thing is, after doing that row, you can hear that we have a significantly different sound coming out of this drum. And right now, this drum, I would say, is an excellent tune.
Nice tension on the top. Lots of snap coming out of the, the sound of the skin. And I would say that for all practical purposes, this is a pretty good place to tune your drum. If though, as leather is wont to do, will continue to stretch, you'll sometimes have to throw a few more diamonds into the mix. So, typically, that first row will come all the way back down and you can see where the rope and the verticals actually began. And that's typically where you'll start your next row. What you'll do is, rather than pulling a diamond here, just simply skip over, tuck the beginning of the rope back under where that first diamond began. And this is where that first diamond came out of. Pull that up so we get ourselves started from here. Then we look for, well, what are the first two ropes we're gonna pull? These coming down here. Again, this one's been used. It's pulled into something at the moment. So this is our first pair of verticals that we're going to use. We'll use the same system we did on the first lower set of diamonds. Again, over two, right? Then I'm going over two, under one, over one, and under two. Pull all that slack out. As soon as we start getting some tension on it, we pull it down. And again, pull it down as far down as you can get it. As close to that next or that first row of diamonds is really good. And we have our first diamond in our second row. Looks a little bit different, but once you start the pattern, you'll see that we're just essentially gonna keep putting those diamonds in on this next row. So, these two are my next verticals. Over two, under one, over one, under two. There's my Z. Feed that rope through, pull it on down. tension out of it. Now you can see where we're going to start having a whole new row of diamonds and a whole new pattern that will continue. I'm checking this drum just to make sure that if I put one more in we're not going to pop the head. Incidentally if you live somewhere that gets into the 90s and maintains that kind of hot temperature over the course of the summer you want to be very aware of just how tight you tune your djembe because if you happen to leave this drum in a hot car or in a room that doesn't have air conditioning during the summer, you will find that if you leave it super tight, it will pop. So be aware as far as the temperature goes. We would just continue on selecting our verticals and adding that next row of diamonds. So your drum is tuned, ready to go. The final step, what do you do with all this extra rope? You get it right back around the base of the drum the way we started. Basically just take that extra and start wrapping some nice smooth tight spirals around the base making sure that as you do this notice that the head of my drum is resting on a pretty soft surface here I wouldn't want to do this outside on a sidewalk concrete or gravel because that's going to be pushing into the head of my drum so be aware as you flip your drum upside down it's on a good surface I'm just wrapping it around in nice neat rows here Sometimes you might see more professional players with a lot of rope and they'll wrap similarly except they'll wrap all the way around the bell of the drum. 
It just happens to be something that they like. It's taste, it doesn't really matter at all. The rope that you have here is all the rope that you'll need to tune these drums perfectly. Your X8 drum comes ready to roll. And once you get back around to where the rope extends down from the bell, just do a couple of snug overhand knots until it's complete. You don't have too much of a tail. And voila, your drum is ready to roll.